Hello, my name is Bern Mitov, the president of Mitov Software, and in this session we will cover creating Internet of Things solutions with Delphi and Arduino. What is Arduino from a hardware point of view? It is a low-cost, open-source hardware microcontroller board. It is resilient, very difficult to damage hardware, suitable to be used by non-experienced users. There is a huge number of clones and boards with new ones appearing every day. It is simple to use hardware design and it is very good for real-time tasks. What is Arduino from a software point of view? When Arduino was developed, the team also developed a simple integrated development environment and standard API. They made it open and as new platforms and boards appear, they were made to support the IDE toolchain and the API. And now the Arduino IDE is capable of programming many different non-Arduino based devices such as Hinsey, Edison, Galileo, ESP8266, FreeSoc2, and even Raspberry Pi. Since the API is standardized, it allows very easy code sharing between the different hardware platforms. Here are some examples of Arduino type boards and examples of some of the clones. Why use the Arduino for Internet of Things? It's a very low cost platform, some boards as cheap as $2 or less. Most boards have a large number of digital and analog channels. There is a large number of connectivity options over Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GSM, GPRS and many others. There is large variety of sizes starting with a small coin size to a pound size boards. There is also a huge amount of available peripherals. What are the challenges of using Arduino? The IDE and the development tools are quite primitive and difficult to learn and use. The required programming is relatively low level and quite challenging. Most people have no problem connecting hardware to it, but they tend to get lost when trying to program it. There is a lack of easily available debugging tools, so most debugging is done through printing messages over serial port. When used for collecting data, there is no easy way to visualize it, especially when working with multiple channels. There are no readily available tools to communicate with it from Delphi or C++ Builder. Because of these challenges, Visuino was developed. Visuino is a graphical development environment for Arduino. It automatically generates Arduino code and programs the boards. It also includes built-in data visualization tools for displaying multiple channels of data arriving from the boards. Visuino has direct mapping of software and hardware components, making the development very easy. It provides uniform communication over serial or socket-based channels. It includes serial port and socket communications components compatible with Communication Lab for Delphi and C++ Builder. Here is how Visuino works. You create your visual design in Visuino. By clicking a single button, it will automatically generate the code and start the Arduino IDE where you can compile and upload the code to your Arduino devices. Here is how Visuino integrates with the rest of the Mito software solutions. You can use Visuino to program Arduino with serial or socket communication to send and receive packetized or non-packetized data. In Delphi, C++ Builder, Visual C++ and .NET, you can use Communication Lab from Mito software to receive the data from Arduino and send other data back. OpenWire Studio has the same communication capabilities and can integrate with Arduino the same way. In addition, Visuino Communication Lab 
an open wire studio, all contain MQTT messaging protocol components and with the help of MQTT server can communicate with each other. How to communicate with Visuino programs Arduinos from Delphi and C++ Builder? Communication Lab allows direct communication over serial port or sockets. It can receive or send raw or structured data. It allows a direct integration with the rest of the Mito software libraries over open wire connections. When you start with Zuno, in the center will be your design area. Here you have visual representation of the Arduino board with all of its channels. On the left, you have navigation panel and below it, the properties panel, where you can edit the properties of the selected component. On the right side will be the component toolbar, where the components are organized in categories and subcategories. You can expand all of the categories or collapse them. A component can appear in more than one categories based on its functionality. You can also search for components. And the filtered result will be shown. Below the design area is the serial communication and the scope views. Here you can monitor your communication with the Arduino when connected. Traditionally, the first project to try when programming Arduino is the so-called Blink project. Arduino has built-in LED on pin 13. And we can make the LED to turn on and off with some frequency. To do this in Visuino, we can add a pulse generator. With frequency of 1 Hz, and connect it to pin 13. If we click on this button, Visuino will generate the Arduino code and will open the Arduino IDE. Here we can select our Arduino board, in my case Arduino Nano, and the port to which the board is connected. If we click on this button, the Arduino IDE will compile and upload the code to the board. You can see that our LED on the controller is blinking. To keep the projects more interesting, we will leave the pulse generator to keep blinking our LED and we'll add more functionality. I have added a joystick to the Arduino Nano and the X and Y coordinates from the joystick are sent to the analog pin 0 and 1. The easiest thing we can do is connect analog pin 0 to the serial port, generate the code, compile and upload it to the Arduino. In the serial terminal, we can select COM port where the Arduino is connected and click connect. We will see the values arriving from Arduino. If I move the joystick, you will see the values changing. and we can monitor the changes in the scope. Now let's connect to Arduino from Delphi. We'll start with new VCL project at a COM port component. and a terminal component.
We will connect them together, select the COM port to monitor, compile and run the application. And you will see the data arriving from Arduino. This is good, however, our joystick has both X and Y coordinates and it has a switch when you press the controller down. We would like to see all of those channels. Sending them as text through the serial port is not the most convenient way to monitor them. Vizuino includes a packet component that allows you to packet multiple channels together and send them through the serial port. We will drop the component, we will add two analog channels and one digital channel. We will specify unique head marker so we can find the beginning of each packet, disconnect the old connection to the serial port and connect our packet to the serial port. Analog channel 1 to analog channel 0 of Arduino and analog channel 1 of Arduino to analog channel 2 of the packet component. Finally, digital channel 1 of the packet component to digital pin 2 of the Arduino where the switch of the joystick is connected. This particular joystick does not have pull-up resistor for the switch, so we will use the built-in pull-up resistor in Arduino for channel 2 by enabling it in the property editor. The project is ready and we can upload it to Arduino. In Visuino, we can select for format of the serial packet 1. The scope will be configured for the three channels of the packet 1 component and visual instrumentation panel will appear showing us the three channels. If we connect you will see that we can control the data with the joystick, it is plotted on the scope and displayed in the visual instrumentation. Now we will connect from Delphi. We will drop COM port component, unpacket component, scope component, two gauges, and an LED. We will switch to the open wire view, connect the COM port to the packet, add two float channels to the packet, and one boolean channel. Set head marker at 5555, the same as in Visuino. Add two more channels to the scope. Connect the elements to the three channels of the scope. Connect the first float channel to angular gauge 1, the second one to angular gauge 2, and the boolean channel to the LED. Select the COM port, 
for the gauges, set max value of one, compile and run the application. You can see the data arriving from the Arduino and being displayed on the gauges and on the scope. In addition to Arduino, Visuino also supports the ESP8266 microcontroller. It has built-in Wi-Fi. It is low cost, very small, about the size of a coin. It can be powered by 3.3 volt coin battery. It is supported by the Arduino ID and Visuino. And there are a number of ready to use USB enabled modules with it, including Node MCU and WeMOS. For this project, we will use the Node MCU version. We will select the board time at Node MCU ESP 12. If we select the board and expand the modules, we'll see that we have Wi Fi capability. Next, we'll add one remote access point. We will set the SSID, in my case ASUS, and the password. For simplicity, we will use a fixed IP address. We will enable the config and we will specify the fixed IP address. It should be address available on your network. In my case, 192.168.0.155. We have the module configured to connect to the hotspot. Now it's time to add sockets. We'll add a server socket and we'll set it to port 8080. We'll use the MPU 6050 accelerometer and gyroscope module. This is I2C module, so we'll connect it to the I2C channel. To send the data over the socket, we'll pack it into a structure. We'll use the make structure component. We'll add seven analog channels. We'll connect the accelerometer to the first three channels, the gyroscope to the next three channels, and finally, the module thermometer to the last channel. We'll connect the output of the make structure component to the input of the socket. To reduce the traffic, we can specify how often we'll send the structure. For this, we'll use a clock component will specify a frequency of 10 Hz. Connect the output of the component to the clock of the make structure. This will ensure that we'll be sending 10 structures per second. The project is ready and now we can generate the Arduino code. We'll select the board. In my case, not MCU version 0.9 the COM port, compile, and upload the code. The upload is ready. Now let's connect to the module from Delphi. We'll add a socket component. Specify the host address and the port add split structure and we'll plot on a scope component. We'll add seven floating point channels to the split structure, connect the socket to it Add 7 channels to the scope 
and connect those channels to the split structure. If we compile and run the application, we will see the data arriving from the gyroscope and accelerometer. Unfortunately, in virtual machine, the communication doesn't work as well as on a physical machine, so I cannot show you the real rate of data change. I can ensure you that it works much better in a physical machine. A relatively new member to the Arduino family is the Arduino 101. It is Intel Curie-based microcontroller with built-in Bluetooth LE, gyroscope, and accelerometer. It is supported both by the Arduino ID and Visuino, and since it has Bluetooth, it is a good candidate to communicate with it from Delphi program mobile devices. We will start new Visuino project, select Arduino 101 as board, expand the modules, Bluetooth, and set a local name. Any relatively short name is a good one. Next, we'll add a Bluetooth service. And we'll connect it to the input of the Bluetooth module on the Arduino. Then we'll add two analog characteristics. We'll send the temperature to the first characteristic and we will use the second one to control a servo. For this, we need to add a servo component. Our servo will be connected to digital pin 2 and will be controlled by the characteristic. The project is ready and now we can generate the Arduino code. We will select the board type as Arduino 101 and the COM port. Then compile and upload the code. The code is uploaded. Now let's take a look at the FireMonkey Delphi application that can control our Arduino through Bluetooth. We'll use the standard Delphi Bluetooth LE component. We'll also add a timer, label, and a trackbar. We'll set the min and max of the trackbar to 0 and 1000. We'll disable the timer, enable the Bluetooth, the first thing we will need in the code is definitions for the ID of our service, temperature, and servo characteristics. Visuino generates IDs for the service and characteristics automatically when you add new service or characteristic, so we can copy and paste them. I have already done that. The next task is to discover the Bluetooth devices when the form is created. In the on end discover devices event of the Bluetooth component, we will iterate through the devices, force the services to be discovered, check if our service is available. If it is available, this obviously is our device, we will assign it to a member variable We'll enable the timer, use this special trick to force the characteristics to be discovered, obtain the temperature and the servo characteristics, and also assign them to member variables for later usage. On timer, we will use a special flag to indicate if we're sending if we are not, we will read the temperature. 
and the characteristic read will assign the pain temperature to the text of the label. If the track bar is changed, we'll set another flag indicating that it is changed. And in our timer event handler, if the track bar was changed, we'll send the new position normalized to the server. And we'll set the sending flag to true and clear the change flag. Finally, in the Bluetooth on characteristic right, we will simply clear the sending flag indicating that we have completed sending the characteristic. Now we can compile and run the application on our device. You can see the temperature displayed here in the label. And if we move the track bar, the servo will follow the movement. We can also use Bluetooth Classic to connect to Arduino from Delphi. For this, on the Arduino side, you can use the HC06 module. It is an easy to use, low cost Bluetooth module for Arduino. It implements serial port Bluetooth service. This makes it very easy to use on the Arduino and Delphi sites. We will use the Bluetooth to remotely control a robot car. I have used the Eligo robot car. It's a great low cost kit manufactured by Eligo. You can see their website. For its feature set, this is by far the most affordable robot kit that I have seen so far. It includes HC06 Bluetooth module for remote control, which makes it a great candidate for our demo. It also comes with rechargeable batteries with charging station, infrared remote and receiver, infrared line tracking sensors, and ultrasonic distance sensor mounted on top of servo that allows it to be rotated and measure distances in different directions. Let's start with the robot design in Visuino. To control the motors, the robot contains a motor driver board based on the L298N chip. We need to add Visuino component for it. In this kit, the motor board is connected with three pins per motor. We'll add the motor driver, connect the forward to the digital pin of digital channel 7, the reverse to digital channel 6, the speed to the analog pin of digital channel 5, for the second motor, the forward to digital channel 8, reverse to digital channel 9, and speed to the analog pin of digital channel 10. The dual motor driver component has two input pins to control the speed of the two motors. We'll send certain values for the motors to go forward, backward, or stop. This will work, however, the motors will turn suddenly and this will not be a smooth ride for the robot. It is best if we introduce transition between the values with a ramp. Visuino includes special component exactly for this purpose. The ramp to value component. We will add two of them. For the two motors. And we'll connect them. We will set initial value for the components to 0.5 which means 
stop for the motor, the speeds for the motors are zero backward, 0 0.5 neutral, and one forward. For slope, we'll set 1.5. We will control the robot with four buttons, forward, backward, left, and right. When none of them is pressed, the robot should not move. This means that we have five different conditions. The simplest way to implement this in Visduino is to use a ray component. We will add two analog arrays for the two motors. And we will connect them to the RAM components. Now we will add the speeds for the five conditions in array one. 0 0.5 or stop for neutral, 1 for forward, 1 for left, 0 for right, and 0 for backward. And we will do the same for the second array. 0 0.5 for neutral, one forward, zero left, one right, and zero backward. To select index in the array, we will use priority encoder to generate value when one of the buttons is pressed. We will connect the priority encoder to the index pins of the arrays. We will receive four different characters from the serial port. F for forward, B for backward, L for left, and R for right. We need to detect those characters. We can do this by comparing them with character constant. For this, we use compare component. We will add four compare chart value components. We will add three more pins to the priority encoder. We will set the four characters for the buttons. F for forward, L for left, R for right, B for backward, and we will connect the components to the priority encoder. Now all we need to do is connect the serial port to the compare components. If necessary, you can rearrange around the forward, left, right, and backward commands to match the left and right motors in case your robot is wired slightly different. Since the Bluetooth module is connected to the serial port, make sure you remove the module before programming the robot. The project is ready. Now we can generate the Arduino code. Select board, port, compile, and upload the code. To control the robot from a mobile device, I have created a FireMonkey application in Delphi. I have added Bluetooth component, label to show when the device is connecting, four buttons to control the direction. I have set the buttons to be disabled and I will enable them when we connect. Set the enabled property of the Bluetooth to true when the form is created. 
we will call discover devices on the Bluetooth. When the discovery ends, we will look through the devices, searching for the HC06 device. If we find it, we will pair with the device. We will look through the services. For the first service, we will create a client socket component. We will connect to the socket. And once when the connection is established, we will make the label invisible and enable the buttons. Then we will break the two loops. We will save the socket in a member variable. For the mouse down of the forward button, we will send F through the socket. For mouse up, uppercase left. The same thing for the rest of the buttons. Lowercase L for the left down, uppercase L for the left up, lowercase R for the mouse down of right, uppercase R for the mouse up on the right, lowercase B for mouse down on backward, uppercase B for mouse up on the backward. Finally, when the form is destroyed, we will free and know the socket. This is all the necessary code. In order for the application to be able to use the Bluetooth, in the project options, we need to set the Bluetooth and Bluetooth admin to true. Now we can compile and deploy the app to the phone. Hold the robot by pressing the buttons forward, backward, forward again, left, right, left, forward, backward, forward, left, right, forward. To connect Internet of Things devices, you can also use MQTT. It is lightweight messaging protocol. It is supported by a number of servers, including Adafruit IO. It supports subscription and push notifications. Because it is so lightweight, it is quite suitable for IoT devices. It is supported by Visuino and Communication Lab in Delphi. For this project, we will use Adafruit IO server. It is a free server and it is fairly simple to use with MQTT. Adafruit has tutorial on how to set up your MQTT account and how to create your feeds. I have created two feeds as they show in their tutorials, photo cell and on off. I have also created dashboard using those two feeds. This is all described in the Adafruit I.O. tutorials. Please follow them to set up your account. Next, we will create our Visuino project. We will use Arduino Mega for this project with Ethernet Shield installed. Expand Shields and Internet Shield. Set up the MAC address. I will use the MAC address from the online Arduino tutorials, but you can use MAC address generator to generate unique MAC address. We need to add plan socket to connect to the Adafruit server. We will set the port to 1883 which is the standard MQTT port. And for cost, following the Adafruit I.O. tutorial, we will set io.adafruit.com. Next, we'll add MQTT client. I will set up my username for the MQTT server account. Next, 
following Datafruit I.O. tutorial, we need to use Datafruit key as password. We can go to one of the feeds, view the key, copy, and paste it. Next, we will add two topics. Again, following Datafruit IO tutorial. The first will be your username fits on off. The second, your username fits photo cell. Now we will connect the MQTT client to the socket. The output from the socket to the input of the client, the output of the client to the input of the socket, the disconnect from the client to disconnect of the socket, and connect from socket to connect of the client. To send data to MQTT, we will use photo cell connected to analog input zero. If we connect it directly to the MQTT client, it will send way too much data overwhelming the communication. Instead, we'll send data once a second using clock generator. And a snapshot component. The snapshot component will get data from the analog input and send it to topic two of our MQTT client. The clock generator will send clock signal once a second to the snapshot. The output of text topic one will be connected to the serial port so we can see it in serial terminal. The project is ready. Now we can generate the Arduino code. Select board, comport, compile and upload the code. The upload is completed. If we connect to Adafruit.io with web browser from desktop or mobile device, we can open our dashboard and we can see that as we move the photo cell in different directions, the value will change. And if we cover it, it will drop sit very low. We can also open serial terminal and when we change the value on the dashboard, the change will be reflected in the serial terminal. and on any other connected device to the MQTT. Next, we'll connect to MQTT from Delphi. We will add socket component, set the host and the port Add MQTT component, set the username, and again, data fruit key as password. To display the topics, we will use two label components from user lab.
they can directly receive and display text data. We will add two topics to the client. Both of them read topics as we will just read for now from the Adafruit I.O. Again, we'll set the topic for the first topic and for the second, exactly the same way as we did in Visuino. We'll connect the output of the socket to the input of the MQTT client and the output of the MQTT client to the input of the client socket. The output of the first text topic to label 1 and the output of the second text topic to label 2. The project is ready. Now we can compile and run it. You can see the data displayed in the project the same way as on the website. And if we move the photoresistor, the value will change. If we cover it, it will drop almost to zero. We can also change the on off value from the website and it will be displayed in our Delphi application. We can also add write and rewrite topics to the MQTT client and send data from Delphi to the server and to other subscribe devices or Delphi applications. I will leave you to experiment on your own. This concludes our session. My name again is Boyan Mitov, the president of Mitov Software. Mitov Software has a number of products for video processing, audio processing, digital signal processing, computer vision, data visualization, visual instrumentation, artificial intelligence, Boolean logic, universal animations, serial and TCP communication, visual live binding library, and a free advanced runtime library. We also develop the OpenWire Studio, a graphical development environment for Windows, and Visuino, a graphical development environment for Arduino. Mito Software also supports the OpenWire open source library and the IGDI plus open source library. Thank you for listening. And now it's time for questions and answers. Great. Thank you so much, Boyan, for that session. Um, I, I love when you're doing these presentations and I can just see that how much complexity gets hidden behind by these powerful tools and libraries you're putting together. And I'm just realizing, Thank you. yeah, it's really neat to see. So if anybody has any questions for Boyan about um, the Visuino and uh, IoT and Delphi, go ahead and post that in the question section now. We'll get, a, get an answer for you. I, you know, when I first was heard about Visuino, I didn't realize it had the Delphi components to, the, to do the communication. And that makes like, oh, that's exactly what I needed because to have the ability to talk to my uh, Arduino applications, right? So I can build, build it with Visuino and then send it over there and then talk to it from Delphi. That's like the, the best, best you could hope for. Yeah, the, the uh, Delphi components, they're part of Communication Lab, and Communication Lab is uh, up to very big extent developed exactly to solve this problem, to easily communicate with uh, Arduino. Here I also demonstrated the MQTT component from Communication Lab, which is not in the currently available official version. I added it uh, literally like three weeks ago. Uh, but I have built that contain uh, the version and anybody who can, uh, contacts me can get it. I'm also looking forward to make a new release in the next couple of, rele uh, uh, couple of weeks. And uh, <clears throat> the MQTT component will be included in that uh, release. And 
I also will try to post probably in my community on my blog uh, pre-release builds uh, that anybody can download and uh, use the MQTT component if they need MQTT functionality. Very cool. So the question here: Do you support for have support for DMX on Arduino? DMX. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what uh, exactly uh, he means the DMX. Quite frankly. I, yeah, he, I he can elaborate on hearing that particular term. He can elaborate on that. I, I think I remember hearing it, but I can't remember exactly what it is, but he, I'm sure that yeah, it's I don't better. recall at the moment. Uh, I mean, is that a different type of controller board or is that a protocol or uh, some much? I mean, there, there are literally thousands of modules and uh, I mean, hundreds, if not thousands of boards that are supported by uh, the Arduino IDE. It's a professional uh, lighting protocol. Yeah, if we talk about protocols and uh, <laughs> things like that, I mean, then then it's it's an ocean, literally. So, yeah, I, I, I'm simply unable to remember every single name and every single module and uh, uh, platform, actually. <laughs> There's so many. Yeah, yeah, okay. So maybe DMX support, but you're not sure offhand. Uh, I uh, most likely not because I have not heard of it. But on another hand, if it is a controller and if it has a reasonably close mapping to Arduino, then it's gonna work. Also, if it is um, also if it is uh, some module which is analog or digital, uh, they're all supported uh, directly. So, yeah, the answer is that it may very well be supported. Uh, not something that I have com confirmed yet. Okay. And again, if somebody needs certain functionality, I'm constantly adding new functionalities uh, to Visuino every single day. So, I mean, please contact me, join the community, and uh, yeah, you may actually see it there. So you just sent here a link. I'll just uh, send this over to you on S Skype so you have it. There's a DMX information. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Great presentation. How can you build so many beautiful uh, suites and components in your lifetime? It's really impressive. That's from Mark. I agree. Very, very impressive. Thank you. Uh, Vladimir is asking, what is the price price point for Vizuino? <laughs> uh, it costs $9.99. Well, $10 actually. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, Everybody go buy it right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that, that's the price, and it can you can purchase it two ways. If you buy it, I mean you buy it forever. The license is not restricted, and you get three months of um, free updates to the newer versions that I'm constantly putting out. If after those three months you want to continue uh, getting upgrades, you can pay additional ten dollars, and you will get one more year of uh, coverage of free updates. And if you keep recharging it once a year with ten dollars, you uh, keep getting updates all the time. I typically put new update like once a week or so on average. So every update comes with more and more components. That's the answer how many components end up there. So it's it's growing very rapidly, and it's been developed very very aggressively. Yeah, that's really cool. That nine dollars and so so then uh but you said the talk to it is from communication lab is that a separate purchase then or is that included or yeah, communication lab is a separated uh, library i um let me check the price actually what's interesting is that uh, all of the libraries you can download and use them as evaluation versions indefinitely for free the only downside is some of the visual components will have a small label on them saying free version so you don't have, I mean, if you just want to play with it, you don't have to buy it at all. <clears throat> if you want to buy it, let me check the price because I don't remember all of the prices. But I think it was uh, priced also quite um, uh, quite low. I'm just uh, checking quickly my pricing uh, table for communication lab. Yeah, it's priced at $39. $39. So, all right, yeah, everybody go so, buy that one too I mean, right now. Everybody that's online, just go buy both of those. And uh, you can rule the Internet of Things right there, and <laughs> that, that's a great deal. Nine ninety five plus thirty nine dollars, and uh, you all can rule 
so Jim's saying, how do I buy things from your site? Apparently he's out there right now trying to buy stuff. Yeah, you can go to order pricing and you'll see the pricing table. And then each of the prices effectively is linked. So yeah, you go to meetof.com. You can probably show it on the screen. I will, because I'm going to go out and buy these as soon as we're done here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you can go to order. Order. Pricing table. Yeah, the top one. Pricing the table. All right, there we go. Yeah. And uh, here you can see the prices, and you can click on price, and if everything works fine, uh, you end up uh, with the link where you can order for the particular product, particular price. All right. So here's Communication can... Lab, $39. Yes. And you can buy, yes, right here from Share It. You can buy it right now, add to cart. Can I, oh, add to cart. That's what I got to do because I'll get Vizuino as well. Uh, Vizuino is uh, not sold um, uh, through Share It just because Share It charges too much. I mean, <laughs> they charge like $3, uh, just a base price. And, ah. uh, it just doesn't work for low cost uh, items. Vizuino, I'm just uh, selling it through PayPal because. Otherwise, I cannot afford uh, to sell it that cheap. With I don't know how you can afford to sell it that cheap anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I really, I mean, my idea with Vizuino is not to really make big money out of it or anything. I just want to make it as affordable for everybody around the world uh, uh, while still getting some money to, to support somehow the development. So I wanted to go even to a lower price if possible, but it's just not possible with the baseline processing charges of uh, of those processing companies. So if they want to buy Vizuino, it's uh, V-I-S-U... Vizuino? I. V I. I. N-O, yeah, you see, yeah, I. I. In. O. O. Uh, you you oh, missed the you. This. This. Vizuino. Yeah, here. actually, products. there is link here under products. Yeah, there is link. I am terrible at spelling, and if I got to type in a URL <laughs> manually, I'm going to get it wrong. Uh, yeah. So then to buy it here. Uh, from here, you can see the website in the bottom. Yeah, scroll down. Scroll down. Ah, okay, there we uh, go. Yeah, right here, it's going to direct you to the website. So here, you can order it. Ordering. And the way to order is you create account on the site. Look at yeah, that, nine ninety five. Account on the site. Here we go. I'll put the link in here so everybody can go buy this right now. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and uh, the way it works is you can create account in the Vizuino website, and once when you have created account, you have a buy option from there. And the reason is that in order for me to generate key for you once when you buy it, you have to have account uh, to uh, connect it. So you can see that it says register now. So you need to register, create account, and then in your account I will generate right here, yes. And I will generate you the key and then the key will be in your account and you can use it. All right. As soon as we're done here, that's what I'm going to do. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. And there's other people saying here, no questions, just awesome stuff. Congratulations. Looking forward to using Vizuino. And hopefully everybody goes out and buys this because uh, – yeah, I mean, if you're on this session, clearly you're interested in uh, Arduino and Internet of Things, and at, at 9.95, 9.99, it's like, you know, do it. <laughs> it's not worth it's not worth the time to think about if it's a good deal or not. <laughs> you should just buy it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, uh, Boyan, for all that you do. I know you put a lot of effort into putting these videos together for us, and. Uh, if everybody else is uh, like me, they probably just got blown away by how cool this all is. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Thank you.